Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. Hi! It's Friday. It's time for the standard Q&A. Yep, yep. Where do these questions come from this time, sir? Oh boy, I pulled these ones from the YouTube comments. Some of them go way back, so uh, we're we're trying to get caught up. We never will. (laughs) But uh, hey, we appreciate your questions nonetheless. Sorry it takes so long to get through them, but uh, we're working on it, so... If you do want your question answered sooner than, rather than later, almost guaranteed that month, head over to <laughs> patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Absolutely, yes. If you want to get your question answered much sooner than it would if you just left it in a YouTube comment, go, go through those methods. Anyway, to kick us off, we got this one here from Green Soda. How do you think the movie writers would handle Fang if he were to ever appear in the movies? Could he still be from an alternate dimension? I'm just imagining the ending scene where Fang bails on Eggman after seeing Sonic defeat him. I mean, just imagine live-action Fang having so many cartoon antics happen to him. This might sound bad, but like, I do just want to see live-action Fang get cartoonishly destroyed in scenes. <laughs> That'd be fun. I, yeah, you're not wrong. Of all the extended cast, he might be one of the easiest to translate. Because the movie universe treats the other worlds as other dimensions. And interdimensional travel seems to be pretty darn easy, all things considered. (laughs) So, yeah, he could be a bumbling sidekick or antagonist with his own motivations running counter to Eggman and Sonic and just happens to show up Wily Coyote style to make a bad situation worse. But yeah, he he could be fun. He could be really easy to plug in there. Yep. Yep. I could definitely see him. It would be, uh, that would be a good time. Team Kingdom Key has a question. So, Ian, if you could make a Jet Set Radio comic, would you? I don't know. Somebody paying me? Because, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I assume Sega would, but you never know. You never know with those guys. It's I, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not a franchise I'm super familiar with. It's not one that I'm, like, jumping at the chance to do. But I am aware of it. And being the game to comic adaptation guy... I could see that one getting pitched to me. So it'd be like with Mega Man. Mm-hmm. I would do my research. I would do my due diligence and then do the best, absolute best I could. A lot fewer games and you could probably actually play them instead of just watching playthroughs of them because they're not well, if we extremely want... difficult in comparison to Mega Man. Uh, Kyle, but you know how well I play games. I know. I know. I'll we'll figure that it out. And... <laughs> Correct. If you're, Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but Jet Set Radio Future isn't so much a sequel as it is a reimagining of the first. Uh, geez. God, I can't remember. Maybe? In which case, I have like a, I would have a game. <laughs> yeah. Like I would look at both because I'm sure there would be differences between the two. And if Jet Set Radio Future is the new standard, you know, little Easter egg nods to the differences between the two would be appreciated by fans, I'm sure. But... They don't uh, They don't bring back Jet Set Radio Future, though, for re-releases. It's only been Jet Set Radio, so... Interesting. Yeah. In that case, it'd be interesting to see what the direction was from the license holder, you know? Yeah, yeah. I could see you working with it. I mean, it's a big, bright, colorful world with bombastic characters that are just crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. It's your thing, man. <laughs> I mean, it's simple enough. You've got, you know, the charismatic underdogs against the oppressive regime. Sounds familiar. That's an, e- that's an easy enough plot line to spoof off of, sure. Pretty much, pretty much. And then you got the framing device of a badass DJ, you know? It's yep. fine. It's all good. You're good. It's good, man. You're in. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not yet. I've got a lot of other things to do first. Oh, okay, fine. Here's a question from Ice Tolly SSB. I know it's probably different for some characters, but how do you generally decide what species a new character should be? Uh, I feel like we've covered this one recent-ishly, so double-check the Q&A master list. But I've lately been saying, oh, yeah, we totally covered that recently. Check the master list. And people go, well, I did. 
I searched the whole thing. I couldn't find it. It's like, well, then I'm making things up and I feel like I'm losing my hold on my sanity. It could it could have been a tangent from another question. It was Me? sometimes go or, on a tangent. Or maybe or maybe it's like, you know, from twenty sixteen and yeah. <laughs> I don't um species really varies from character to character. Like with Tangle, it was intrinsic to the character. We wanted somebody who had that kind of long reach who had the look to them of a scrapper someone who was you know, light and nimble and bouncy and we went through a few ideas but lemur really lent itself to it and the tail just sold the idea everything came together with that tail whereas rough and tumble they didn't have a species at pitch uh, they weren't even necessarily brothers initially they just treated each other like that so when we were going with the initial concept, I was fine if they were completely different species. They just needed to be a couple of rough looking dudes, tough looking <laughs> dudes, if you will. <laughs> and Tyson Hess came up with the skunk brothers and it's like, yep, that works. That's cool. So, mm -hmm. or in Mimic's case, he's a mimic octopus. That was the entire basis for the character. <laughs> That was species first by far, whereas Tangle was kind of a middle ground and Rough and Tumble were just the core character concepts first. So it really depends on what the character is. Yeah. Here's a question from Necromage. If Starline could only choose one of the two, which would he choose? The Tricor or the Warp Topaz? Uh, if we're talking about Starline towards the end of his run, probably the Tricor. Since it was something of his creation, it had versatile usage, and there'd be a degree of pride attached to it. The warp Topaz is something he found, something he figured out, but it's not really his, you know? Sure. That makes sense to me. Here's one from the Blue Ghoul. You think any of the artists on IDW would dare to slip in an, in Sally or a Sally lookalike in the background? I say this because I got rotor vibes from the hot dog Stan Walrus in the 30th anniversary comic. I'm not going to speculate on what other artists do. Um, I think it's happened. <laughs> that would be up to them to confirm or deny. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say, oh, yeah, that's totally it. And they're like, no, thanks for throwing me under the bus, Flynn. Well, it so. has happened. <laughs> I mean, I understand the desire to do so. You know, just an Easter egg, a wink and a nod for the old school fans. I still feel like it's a bit of a raw nerve for some folks and they might take it and run with it. So it's very uh, small. I think it's just a, I think it's just a picture on a, oh wait, no, the forces comic did have that. Mm -mm, that, <sighs> that didn't have those after a point. <clears throat> <laughs> So, no, that never happened. Nope. Hashtag no, he smile. No, hashtag don't get anyone in trouble. Shut up. <laughs> That's a very long hashtag. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Not really. Sega doesn't listen to this show. God, why would they? I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain about that, actually. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are we? Li are, does somebody at Sega know who I am? Oh, God. That's No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that in my life. Thank you very much. I don't need anybody at Sega knowing who I am. That's frightening. Sega, hire this man to launch Radio Sega for realsies. That's frightening. No, no. Go work with the Radio Sega guys. They are actually... You've worked with them before. They're good people. Go work with them. <laughs> Go work with them. <laughs> Not me. They actually have like you know the all the branding and stuff ready to go. Go with them, not me. Uh, anyway, here's one. Is, here's one from Vitor R. Where do Mobians get their powers? Like Sonic, Kitsunami, etc. Well, Kit was designed with his thanks to Starline, but Sonic's is all natural. <laughs> there isn't really an explanation, and I kind of like it that way. He's just a super fast dude. He was brown, and then he ran really fast on a treadmill and became no, no, blue. No, 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 mm. non-canon. How was that non-canon? It was literally in the Bible thing, wasn't it? The old one? That's probably no longer mm. canon. That's not canon. <laughs> That's the old, old testament. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so old school, they tore the school down. <laughs> one, two, one, two. <laughs> Where are my lasers at, Kyle? Where, Where are my lasers, lasers at, y'all? y'all? <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy! Just like last this, earlier this week, where we talked about Homestar Runner quotes. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Actually, as a quick follow up to that one, if you remember from the previous episode, I had gone back to the gym and I was hurting really bad, so I ended up making old man noises getting off the couch. <laughs> and Leah goes, "I'm really surprised you didn't say Higa <laughs> getting up." <laughs> I'm like, you know what? That's how you know I'm really tired. I didn't say he could hurt her. <laughs> oh, man. I'm making noises every time we stand up. That's that's the thing now, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's just, it's it's not even, like, conscious. It just happens. <laughs> Here's a question from Ralph OTG. Did you get any notes about Tails having mint as his favorite candy? I asked because I've read that it's good for memory. No notes specifically because I already knew that. But there was another project I was working on where I forgot to include that as a factoid. And it got flagged saying, remember to put that in on the revision. It's like, oh, yeah. Oops. So, yes, they remember. Yes, I remember. Need to eat more mint, apparently. But, uh, (laughs) yeah. I like mint. It's delicious tasty here's a question from blazer 3000 if you ever had the chance would you have liked to have had a round table with all the head writers of other son- sonic continuities going off of that which head writer of any sonic project would you like to talk to the most oh my goodness i don't know if they were all concurrent enough to have a serious round table but i mean this is a theoretical thing you know yeah i mean it would be fascinating to just kind of sit back and compare notes what was pitched and what was passed on and what mm-hmm. you wanted to do and what could have been done and you know just the philosophy behind the characters i will forever cherish the brief time i got with Nigel kitching just talking shop and all the very stuff of how different it was doing sonic books excellent fellow just purely charming great dude yep i could definitely see that yeah i, I think that would be fun but it would be It'd probably be pretty tough <laughs> for some of them. Yeah. And as for most, I don't want to pick favorites. I don't know. It's just each one of them would have brought something interesting and unique to the discussion. And I don't know. I could learn something from all of them. Yep. Here's one from Certified Nobody. Why didn't Archie Sonic get flashbacks to the pre-reboot timeline when he was exposed to chaos energy? A simple chaos control from Shadow was enough to jog his memory before. <sighs> Oh, and here we go, showing how long it's been since I've reviewed this material. I thought Sonic got the memory jog at the very beginning of the arc. Yeah, I thought that was... He came back with... Like, he didn't get a dedicated scene, I don't think. Yeah, he got it from Nicole, I thought. Because everybody got theirs from Nicole. And I don't remember him getting it from Shadow. Hmm, I don't know. I'd have to go back and reread, to be perfectly honest, but... I kn- I do know that Sonic had the flashback uh, memories from the start. That was kind of the. It was in. I'm receiving word that it was in Worlds Collide and Shadow did Chaos Control, and they got flashbacks to before the Genesis Wave. But okay, but that was before the. That would have been before the reboot, technically. Well, in that case, so, that's foreshadowing to. Yeah. Kind of yeah. So he didn't get a. Yeah. So he did. Ultimately. Yes. But it was, you know, this was all an editorially mandated thing that ultimately never paid off. And you just kind of swept under the rug eventually anyway. So because it was dumb (laughs) to have them remember the old things because it never went anywhere. You never you you didn't get the chance to really do anything with that. Well, my intention was it was that them just having it was the payoff. It was yeah. an acknowledgement that something had come before, that it wasn't all for naught. But at the same time, I didn't want them saddled with the baggage of remembering all that, plus the new continuity. So, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can think of a certain other comic book company that's done something very similar and then uh, just kind of ignored it. We did it. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to deal with that trauma. 
<laughs> of trying to reconcile two different realities, memories intermingling in your head. That sounds like uh, it would probably be, uh, yeah, it would not end well. Not good. Here's one from Joss A.B. Between Rouge the Bat, the Babylon Rogues, and Fang the Sniper, who's the best thief? Ah, I would argue Rouge, because okay. she's a one-person act. Jet Jet needs the team to back him up. Like, they're all competent in their own right, but they're better as a unit. Mm-hmm. And Fang is competent enough to be a threat, but as we've covered, he's Wily Coyote. <laughs> he he exists to be foiled in hilarious fashion. So overall, I would say Rouge. Yeah, yeah. Like in terms of stealth, like, like obviously Rouge wins hands down. The other two are way too loud. <laughs> they have no uh, no stealth capabilities whatsoever. Here's one from Ryan W. On the cover for IDW Tangle and Whisper issue four, the duo are underwater. From the way Whisper looks, he, can she not swim? Because to me, it looks like she's drowning. And what about Tangle? Can she swim? They can swim. It's just it's a thematic cover. It was a duel to the death on a abandoned platform out in the ocean. It's just dramatic. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the covers of that are... I like the covers. It's just kind of a strange choice of a scene to base it on. But <laughs> I like it. So, And she's also kind of like drowning in the past, you know? a good one and they're fighting an octopus so yeah 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 water there's multiple levels here mostly made of like the water mostly made of water Mm -hmm. here's one from s studios alex are shadow shoes extreme gear or not if they are that means that darkness extreme gear is simply a variation of shadow shoes what would be the reason that in sonic riders he uses skate type extreme gear but then in sonic riders zero gravity and sonic free riders did he change back to black shot board type extreme gear Gerald made the shoes for Shadow, so I'm imagining that they are unique items and that the air shoes in the Rider series are just kind of built with that in mind. I don't think there's supposed to be a canonical link between the two. Uh, That would be an interesting thread to pull, but I don't know if there's any greater intent behind it. Yeah. I'm I'm 99% sure shadows uh, extreme gear of choice between games is purely gameplay Mm -hmm. and the i believe this question has been addressed before so it's on the master list check that one and maybe you'll find more detail but uh yeah here's one from last guardian of the floating island how would it play out if storm the albatross and knuckles swap jobs knuckles was a member of the rogues and storm was guardian of the master emerald (laughs) uh if we're talking just like some cosmic imp decided to do a swap here and there (laughs) it would not go very well because knuckles has a sense of honor he would be all about you know finding treasures but he wouldn't allow anyone to steal from anyone get out of here against that (laughs) so uh he'd be fighting his teammates pretty quick get out of here mix a (laughs) spittalick stop doing (laughs) it Meanwhile, I imagine Storm is trying to steal the Master Emerald, so he picks it up. The island starts to drop. He puts it back. Island goes back up. Well, the island's safe now. He's going to take the Emerald, picks it up. Island starts to drop. Oops, he got better put it back. <laughs> now I'm just imagining, like, you know how, uh, remember in Superman, the animated series, Miss Mixus Spitalik was just terrorizing Superman at mm-hmm. random points. Mm-hmm. Just He'd just show up. <laughs> I could totally see that him doing that to Knuckles. And Knuckles would hate it. <laughs> In the same way Superman also hated it. <laughs> that would be very, very funny. Now, if we're talking that they grew up in those scenarios, that Knuckles, for whatever reason, was found by the rogues as a child and grew up in that lifestyle. Yeah. He probably would be, you know, more or less filling storm's role he just would have less patience for jet's obnoxiousness (laughs) whereas storm again i feel like if he was just there and you know grew up with the mindset of okay this is your duty and he would do it it's just he would fall for eggman's tricks even worse slash more easily than knuckles 
The chat says that Knuckles is Jet's volume control. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, that would make some sense. Here's a question from JR Unbound. Which Sonic character do you think would be the best Olympian? Sonic would probably win the sprint, but events like swimming would probably not end well. Yeah, but he's extremely nimble. So he would have pretty much the entirety of track and field in the bag. And like, yeah, in reality, Mario wouldn't stand a freaking chance, but you know. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's give credit where it's due. Mario is an incredible athlete. Yeah. So he he would he would put up a decent competition. I would even in the gymnastics. Like in the gymnastics, that would be a harder thing to call. But um I guess in any of the weightlifting events you would need someone more like Knuckles or Amy. And then swimming events, as far as we've seen, it's a toss up, I guess, between Knuckles, Rouge, or Vector. Mm-hmm. Vector might just be disqualified because all we've seen is him do the gator swim. And I'm pretty sure you have to stick to form. Like you have to do freestyle in the freestyle, but with arms like that, gee, but it's, but it's freestyle. Doesn't that mean you can do anything you wanted? Cause it's freestyle. You would think, but no, it's... <laughs> Oh, darn. This isn't monster truck confound... freestyle then. Darn. <laughs> it always confounded me as a kid in swimming lessons. Like it's freestyle. This is exactly how you do it. It's not freestyle. It's an actual style. Why is it called free? Uh, cheap as free style. So I don't get it. I don't understand. Would Sonic win the Olympics? Yeah, probably. He would win a large portion of them. Yes, he would win. He would even win swimming because he could just run across the water. He wouldn't, you know. I'm fairly swim. certain that'd be against regulation. So <laughs> it could be like the Olympic Games, where they just give him like flippies and a life vest <laughs> which is very funny and our last question before we take a break comes from some nuclear energy seeing as you did some turtle comics how would any incarnation of them your choice fare against the noid <laughs> would they be able to avoid the noid oh now that that is a crossover we need <laughs> If you ever want to see Mikey go full Warpath and make Wrath blush, you bring in the Noid. No, you must avoid the Noid. <laughs> so if you're too old to remember what the Noid is, the Noid oh, was God, yeah. you know, the Noid was uh, Domino's old mascot, wasn't it? Was it Domino's Pizza? I don't remember now. It wasn't Little think. Caesars, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Domino's, and uh, basically, it was just a little creepy cartoon guy trying to steal everybody's pizza. So he must avoid the Noid. So yeah, it was I think it was all tied into their uh, guaranteed delivery campaign because you won't be annoyed. Oh, your pizza will come on time. Right, right. Yeah, I think the joke kind of got lost because the Noid himself as a character took off. And then he became kind of like the Hamburglar <laughs> of the franchise for a bit. And this was back in the day, so this was all stop motion claymation stuff. Yeah, yeah, this was in the late nineties or late eighties. So, yeah, it, it it was a very odd ad campaign. Probably the most remembered thing about it now is the video game Yo Noid for the NES, mm -hmm. which is. Just a reskinned version of a Japanese game called Common no Ninja Hanamaru, <laughs> which is completely different. I mean, it's pretty much the same game, but it's completely different style and everything. It's kind of like Decap Attack, you know? The original version of Decap Attack is a very different looking game from the original, and Yonoid is kind of similar. But honestly, Yonoid isn't that bad. Like, even the music's pretty decent. It's by Capcom, so... <laughs> you know not actually not too bad but uh, a very odd thing to make a game about well it seems like if you had a mascot you got a game back in the day you know the pepsi spot got a friggin game <laughs> you mean seven up spot seven up ah, whatever i don't drink either of them <laughs> no. it's it's cool spot man from seven up not yeah. pepsi spot pepsi whatever. pepsi was pepsi man okay Yes. I, I do I do apologize then because Pepsi Man 
Now that's a hero for the ages. Truly, he truly is. The Pepsi man, he is here for a TV game. And the, the, that TV game guy, man, he's he's my best. Pepsi for TV game. Shwa. So somebody took a... Uh, ah, shoot, I don't remember now. What was it? What was that sandbox game where you got all the weird mutant powers? Uh, Saints Row 4? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Hulk <sighs> Ultimate Destruction? Infamous? Prototype, prototype. Prototype. Oh, infamous, prototype, whatever. They're both the same thing. <laughs> Somebody took Prototype and modded in Pepsi Man. Oh, good. <laughs> As and they all the particle effects were just the Pepsi logo in some shape or form. <laughs> it was glorious. And I really hope it played the music constantly. I'm pretty sure it did. It needs to. On loop, all the time. <laughs> Please. I need, I need more Pepsi Man theme in my life. I need all of it. <laughs> Anyway, let's take a break here because we are way off course. <laughs> we have gone way off track, so uh, we need to we need to go. But we'll be back soon with more Bumblecast. We're back, and we got a question from Sonic Multiverse. What is the origin of the time eater of Sonic Generations? Officially. No one knows. Um, unofficially, I still head canon that it's leftovers of Solaris. I mean, it's it's a time travel monster. It's got similar color themes. The final boss is a giant Iblis esque sun flying around in the background. You light a bunch of old torch. I feel like it's supposed to be <laughs> like Solaris clippings or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Hmm. All right, here's one from Michael B. Just how much of the Dark Legion joined the Eggman Empire? Uh, I don't know if we ever had a set number, but if you figure, like, uh, they all got de-legionized by energy knuckles, say, I don't know, half of them were just done with it, decided to go back with the other Echidna survivors, and then the hard, hardcore followed Lian Da, say, at least 50%. All right, here's one from Diego I. Suppose you were given a chance to write a one-shot for Sonic without any limitations, no mandates, no time constraints, no page limits, anything allowed. So I could just showed up and said, here's the money, do your thing. What would you do? P.S. Going wild is encouraged. <laughs> well, if we're talking zero restraints, then this one-shot's just going to be published ad infantum. You know, maybe make it a web release because it doesn't have an end. It just keeps having pages as long as they're produced. And, <laughs> hey, there's money behind it. Why not? So uh, we're just going to restart everything. Whole Sonic continuity as per my vision. Because why not? <laughs> why not indulge? <laughs> Take your, everything... ego, your ego ever growing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to give me the keys to the castle, I'm going to change the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> uh like take take into consideration everything that the franchise has done and i mean everything ova underground adventures of the whole kit and caboodle canceled games and, everything yep and see if there's a place for it and kind of start from scratch uh, with a singular concentrated vision maybe tinker with the designs a little bit to be wholly homogenous and just go one ever expanding one piece esque epic ad action adventure series that takes time to be silly and then goes hard on the action when it needs to slows down for a little bit of pathos and they get right back to the good stuff and just go till the end of time. Mm. Oh, if only we can dream. Here's a question from Rosemary R. If Sega and Sonic Team allow you guys to put Infinite and possibly Jackal Squad in the IDW comics, will we see these characters in the future comics? All up to them. You know, if somebody's got a pitch for them, see if Sega allows it and go from there. I can't say because I honestly don't know. Here's a question from Blue Velocity 91 What do you think would happen if Sonic was roboticized instead of Sally? 
Would she and the others outright give up, or do you think they would do everything they can to continue the good fight? I know Sonic's been roboticized before, but I imagine things would play out differently. They wouldn't give up, for sure. They're the Freedom Fighters, for pity's sake. They fight till the bitter end. Pretty much, yeah. Um, if we're doing it in the scenario of like the roboticized Sally thing, it would... On the one hand, it would be kind of a retread of Mecha Madness, which was, you know, their greatest champion becomes their greatest enemy. But that was done in two issues. Three, if you want to count the kind of epilogue thing where he clears his name. But the Spaziate two issues, those glorious, glorious two <laughs> issues. So it would be a little bit of a retread, but it would also be thematically the same because you know, Sally was the brains of the outfit. She was the core to the team. And so making her the enemy was supposed to be a big deal. And the team's ability to rally from that setback and triumph was supposed to be part of their greatest victory ever. Just didn't get to uh, tell the victory part of that story. <sighs> mm. So if we had a Mecha Sonic in that scenario, it would hit a lot of the same notes. They would just be executed differently because Sonic would be less of a strategist and more of a blow things up type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would uh, I wonder if people would think you killed off Sonic in that case? Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. But Sonic. obviously, you obviously you couldn't like. <laughs> Yeah. You can't really kill off Sonic. Definitely not permanently. Like, <laughs> Hey, folks were pretty convinced I had offed most of the game cast during Metal Virus. And so. they were also convinced that you had offed Sally in yeah. the same way. It's like, his name is on the front of the book. He, he, he's not dead. <laughs> like, he's... he's... <sighs> I am curious if I would have been able to do a multi-issue Mecha Sonic like that. They may not have allowed that. Mm -hmm. This this day and age, I'm not so sure. I might have been able to get away with that kind of thing. Mm. But mm. you know, in this hypothetical scenario, and it was Sonic who got roboticized, you know, sacrificing himself to off the Death Egg. Yeah, yeah. Team fighters would be Sally, Tails, and Amy traveling the world, trying to make things right and fighting Mecha Sonic, basically. Yeah, mm. sounds which would have been cool too. Mm-hmm. Here's this one from Akai. For April Fool's Day 2022, can we pretend it's 2002 for the Q&A and Sonic Mega Collection just came out? You guys can still retain your same personality. I just think it would be a little fun. That's certainly an idea. <laughs> we have a few ideas bumping around for April Fool's Day, but uh, also this was a... April Fool's Day 2022, which if this gives you an, an indication of when this question was asked... Wow. So let's say for April Fool's Day 2023. <laughs> I actually had an idea that I wanted to pitch to you. So I checked the calendar and April's Fool's Day is like a day after the scheduled bubble cast. Yeah. Yeah. This year, I and think it, it was it, on the first, but next year it will not be. I just, think it, we had a day. It, w it would perfectly not work for what I had in mind. And that disappoints me. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick a pin in it. Pitch, pitch it to you later. 2023's April 1st is a Saturday. So, oh, well, we'll figure it out. I needed it to be on a Friday. <laughs> Why? <sighs> oh, well. I got a question here from Robin M. Even though you've embraced the classic modern division... Why did you try to integrate the hooligans into the modern universe when you had Sonic name drop the hooligans and violate Sega's guidelines? Presumptive of you. Uh, name dropping the hooligans was something to kind of test the waters to see what we could do. And it got approved and then retroactively not. Such <laughs> is the thing. But the classic modern, I don't really want to call it a division just because they are continuous from each other. It's weird. <laughs> that hadn't been solidified yet. So ultimately it does make a certain degree of sense because Sonic faced the hooligans in the past. Therefore he is referencing something that he encountered back in the classic days, just in the modern context. Yeah. It all makes sense from a certain point of view. Yeah. 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 Not to, uh, discount all the, 
just discount the people who got mad that you called them the hooligans, even though that's not kind of, they're not canonically supposed to be called the hooligans. I don't know what the heck <laughs> that, that too is under review from my understanding. So mm. Mm. interesting. Here's one from geo knuckles. Was Mephilus a demon? Are demons not allowed in Sonic? I don't know what he counts as. I mean, Solaris is pretty clearly divine entity. So uh, I guess you could count him as a demon, but then it's like, what form of demon that are we talking like classical Abrahamic demon? Are we talking more Grecian way? I don't know. Mm. He certainly fits the bill for a lot of stereotypical demonic traits. So if you want to call him that, sure. Why not? Demons are allowed in Sonic. I mean, Sonic is a demon. A speed demon. Mm-hmm. I know it's funny. It's so funny you couldn't laugh, but it, it was there. It was there. It's, it was in your heart. So entertained was I. I was robbed of my laughter. I knew it. I knew it. Here's one from Kanoka Club. If you had to introduce Sonichu into the IDW comics, how would you do it? His lore is not sacred here. Go nuts. I would not. <laughs> no, let's not. And say we didn't. Bony Cheese has a question. Mimic the Octopus, Kip the Capybara, and Cosmo walk into a bar. What happens? Also, Mimic is disarmed, Kip has a Glock, and Cosmo has a broken bottle. <laughs> why is Kip packing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? Why, is, right. why isn't he normally? <laughs> I mean, really... Cosmo has the broken... Cosmo has a broken bottle because she saw it on the street, was worried someone might get hurt, so she brought it indoors to throw it away. She's a good person. <laughs> Kip? Kip I'm concerned about, but, you know, as long as he's licensed and he's in a, you know, open carry state, sure, all right, fine. <laughs> all right. Mimic, I mean, if he doesn't have a contract for anybody, he's just there to get a drink. <laughs> you know, he's fine, and Kip and Cosmo don't know who, who he is, so they go in, they get their drinks. You know, Cosmo's going to get some filtered water, I don't think... Anything alcoholic is good for plants, but I hope Kip understands his limits while he's carrying that thing. Hopefully the safety's on for his own sake. What if Kip has a contract for Mimic? <laughs> Kip is secretly a mercenary. <laughs> there we he's go. a driving instructor on the side. That's it. That's right. That's how he launders his blood money. Yeah. He, I mean, he's a, he is a driving instructor, so he... He probably needs to have a gun, you know. If I could think he of, he has a, no fear. If I could think of a job that might justify a gun, <laughs> a driving instructor might be one of them. <laughs> well, fine. <laughs> Kip's a, come in to murk the murk. That's a joke, by the way. In case anybody thought I was being serious. In which case, Mimic <sighs> takes the broken bottle and he leaves. Kip does not. Hmm. Yeah, kind Kip, of. It's clipped. Kind of figured that much. Poor Kip. I like Kip. I miss Kip. I need more Kip He's in my life. No! <laughs> we will not have the decapybara attack. No. No. All right. Here's a question from Axolotl's workbench. Question If you're going to do the Chaos Knuckle storyline in IDW, how would you do it? The easy answer would be I wouldn't, and we just roll on. But let's let's stay here for just a second. I don't know if that could work. Chaos knuckles. Really. That's green knuckles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grun grunkles. <laughs> <laughs> Grunkle knucks. Yes. <sighs> um, because the whole thing with chaos knuckles was it's based off of the storyline that he is a living chaos emerald that he was genetically engineered and, you know, enhanced through well-intentioned, but still decidedly creepy super science to be a potentially godlike being. And then when forced into a situation where he thought he had lost control, he taps into a power that he doesn't fully understand in a well-meaning attempt to right everything. And because Knuckles is a blunt object, he doesn't think about any of the connotations. It's just he exerts his will, he makes changes, and then he sees, oops, there's a domino effect to everything. Which is Knuckles-esque enough, but 
in IDW, Knuckles doesn't have that kind of power, nor would he be reckless enough to fully tap into the Master Emerald to gain that kind of power, nor could the Master Emerald grant him that kind of power. Uh, I could see him still wanting to fix things in the least thought out way possible, the most direct, and that leading to issues. But within the context of IDW, which follows the rules of the games, it's actually really hard to come upon full godlike power. So I honestly don't think you really could do a Chaos Knuckles-like story and hit the same thematic points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could imagine Knuckles just looking at the Master Emerald and saying, do I look like I need your power? <laughs> I think they touched upon that in the latest Tales tube. You know, it's not his right to take the power, it's his duty to guard it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's boring. It's noble. Yeah, but it's also boring. <laughs> Here's a question from Sam S., are sharks the reason why Mimic stays on dry land instead of going into the sea? Hey, you don't know where Mimic's got his timeshare. <laughs> he goes relaxes under the sea. Under, under the, the sea. sea. Buddy, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from him. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Mm. Up on the shore, he goes to slay. Under the sun, they waste away. <laughs> Bodies are floating. Down there, he's chilling under the sea. Down there, he's gloating. <laughs> there we go. Bodies are floating. That's down there, he's gloating. He's gloating. <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> you're welcome glad I could help <laughs> here's a question from Metal Skulk Bane this question is arguably a bit mature but we're all dignified adults here right speak for, uh... speak for yourself we can handle some grown up stuff again speak for yourself so the taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems is in, is in dispute. Considering the delicate cosmopolitical situation, what's your stance on neoliberal? Wait, I have a much simpler question. How would you fix this? How would you fix the story of Sonic 06? And here I thought it was going to be how are you going to fix the story of the prequels in Star Wars? That well, would have been fun too. Well, how would you do that? <laughs> No, no, I, answer this question first. <laughs> I was going to say, Kyle, that is an entire episode by itself. I was going to say. <laughs> books on that, so, i was gonna you know. say yeah you probably have ideas I've, I've spent entirely too much time thinking about that subject and come away with well if i'm going to put that much thought into it i just might turn it into its own thing you know and then drogoon was born <laughs> <laughs> no drogoon's born of other frustrations of things i'll never get to touch but <laughs> yeah yeah i know I anyway know, i know <laughs> uh story of 06 that's a very presumptive position, not throwing you under the bus, Metal Skulk Bane, but, you know, that's assuming I have control at a, like, producer level. And 06 is notorious for being pushed out the door to the holidays because of upper management. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 06 has a lot of problems. I do not lay those at the feet of Sonic Team and the developers. They did the best they could with what they were given. So... I feel like it's a tragic case of what could have been something truly grand and epic. And the artists and the crew involved just didn't get to fully realize their vision. Story-wise, I feel like Shadow's story is fine as it is. I feel like it's the most compelling of the three. I wish there was a little bit different voice direction here and there. Like when Omega reveals that he is the one who took out shadow in the future. I wish there had been just a shred of regret in his voice. I know the whole gimmick with Omega is that he's very one note monotone, but just a bit of hesitation in the revelation would have worked better for me. Um, Silver's story is fine. Overall. I really, really wish they had been more implicit with blaze's involvement in everything because that is a source of confusion in the fandom to this day and i would understand not wanting to get bogged down in the weeds for a title that you know was coinciding with a different title and you don't want to alienate people who didn't play something on a completely different system and yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you're gonna have her there and you're going to make her you know such a prominent character yeah cover all your bases of course that may have been one of the things that they had to cut for time i don't know 
Sonic Story is the weakest. Mm -hmm. In part because it's so repetitive, which might be contingent on the way the game flows. And it could have been, well, we got to make these two stages meet. We got to get this out the door. So uh, Eggman kidnaps Elise again, sure. Uh, Elise, I feel like, had an interesting personal crisis, but I don't feel like it was fully explored, not in a very nuanced way. At least a lot of it came down to very simplified explorations of it. Just, you know, she can't cry. Okay. And she's always acting very positive. Okay. There's a falseness in that. How can a, I don't know how she old she was when everything went to hell for her, but like 10, 12, how does a child slash preteen who is now the head of state having lost her parents supposed to not cry you know what kind of will what kind of strength of character does it take to put on that facade for fear of unleashing the fire within her i feel like she needed to be she needed a little more agency in her own um uh, in her own struggle and sonic's ultimate message of you know just smile against that windows xp desktop oh man <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 underlying message of you know you don't have to face all of adversity with a stiff upper lip you can let things happen to you and you can learn to roll with it you don't lock everything out you don't push everything away you just accept life as it comes and just smile there are going to be bad times you're going to go through adversity and you can get through it you know, you have that inner strength. You've proven it to this point, Elise. So just smile, accept who you are and accept your own inner strength. I feel like the idea is somewhere in there. It just, it needed to be found. And that's very hard to do when you're in a fast paced action platformer. Mm -hmm. So how to fix all that? I honestly don't know. I don't know how you could do that without making it a lot of, lengthy cut scenes which just slow you down between the actual core gameplay which is meant to be fast paced mm -hmm. it's very easy to say oh yes these are the ideals and uh, here's how they should have been executed it's one thing to say it's another thing to do it and i'm not really sure how to do that while maintaining a good sonic game mm -hmm. would you decide to keep elise as a human or yeah, I don't have a problem with the humans anymore. I've kind of accepted it. Um, okay, I know. Yeah, I mean, art-wise, I they... wish they had gone with something more cartoony, something more unleashed esque. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that might have granted some events a little more leeway, soften the blow a little bit for people who were who were uh, not necessarily prepared for <laughs> any sort of. Uh, romantic interaction between humans and cartoon hedgehogs. <laughs> I mean, I think I, there would still be some eyebrows raised, but I think a cartoon human versus a near photorealistic one. Well, at least at the time, difference. you know, at the time. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not and really so still... photorealistic now, but <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some redesigns of Elise actually for, uh, that are more cartoony and more along the lines of unleashed. And they're, they actually are really mm -hmm. nicely done. So, yeah, she work, and it, and it would make Eggman fit in better too. Yeah, I, and maybe pepper a few Mobians in with the crowd scene just so it isn't you know completely weirdo bizarro. Why is it just humans? <laughs> but that's a kind of series wide thing. Yeah, yeah. And if you really want to go back to this point, the kiss. Yeah, you know, make it a prayer. Same idea. Could, yeah. I know it's I I know it's not, but I'm 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 dialing it way back to the whole. It's her desire to bring him back. We don't have to do the fairy tale Snow White kiss of life. It can be a prayer. It can be a please bring him back and you know whoosh chaos power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, we got one last question, and it's from Sir Bibton. Does Blaze bathe by licking herself? And an equally worse follow up question: Does she have hairballs? No and no. <sighs> Thankfully. 
<laughs> and she can control fire. All she has to do is like briefly burn away any filth, and boom, she's done. <sighs> yes. For... I might give her heartburn, though. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. <laughs> all right we're mm. done here thank <laughs> thankfully yes we're done <laughs> before we go we need to give a big thank you to all the folks who sponsor the show and make it possible through their donations over at patreon.com slash bumblecast ko-fi.com slash bumblecast and our youtube members Big thank you to Daniel H, Alex B, James K, John B, Jennifer R, Robotnik Holmes, Samuel P, Sam Cybercat, Torchbound, Mike B, Dave M, Andrew D, Salute Your Cat, Coupling Crew 128, J Frost, Do As Diz Din, Hero of Light 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Ryan D, Chris A, Noni, Sony, John M, Jib, Don B, Yami M, Lee H, K, Fiona M, Lisa M, Invade Turbo Tuna, Chevelle, Ben W, Ben, uh, Sonic, 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 Scurvy, Pirate Hog, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Tick, Tick, Xander, Running the Painter, Jonathan D, Final Neil, Arc Fighter, The Name is X, Alaris, Stain, Nemer, Godzilla, Justin S, Alex, GS, Daddler, The Dalek, Ava, Arctic, Quaggle, Gaggle, Sonic, Legacy, Dove, Professor Rye, Just a Mountain Soul, Pedanti Cat, Cameron H, Nondal, Red, The Supernamic, Chad, Les, Jennifer H, Starlight, Sec, Alpha Monarch, you can Twilor, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Jolene B, Preston M, The Disgayan, Dapper Shinks, Noah S, Sonic 84, Kojiro Highland, Supersonic Fan, Awesome Cakester of the Stars, so- Chaos Sonic 1, Radry, Chase L, Callum Q, and Tails, Red Wolf, Derusaville, Maddie H, KJB, Wild 48, T Ranger, In Zephyr, Miles, The Prower, Navare, Exodol, Agent Kaz, The Marble Gardener, Mox, Owen B, D, so- Four Sonic Fan, Vlad, Rhythm Raccoon, Miggy Sawdust, Pig Dan 20, Ty Cyan, Puppy the Scholar, Curly Quills, Triforce Riku, Classic Sonic, Chaos Shadow, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Michael P, Angela V, Delta God 77, Fang the Werehog, Nova Poly Duo, Smiley 21, The Flower Garden, Sammy, yes, Sterling Sonic, Caswell, Mr. Murderbird, The Giant Murdering Bird, Jube, Conga, Shakira Law, Rocketman, Windskull, Delante, Sky the Desu, Supernova, Indebend, Superior Pizza, Sonic Padge, Lacey M, Unlikely Veronica, Thigall, Fi, The Children Grow, Learn What's Right, Tetsu Knife, Loop de Loop, Omega Man 21, Crowbo, Sonic Mania 2099, Adronis, Nils, Noob 600, Pele, El Technopata, Z Cartoonist, Vlad C, Vare Dragon 5, Steph Cube, Scourge Time, Luminous Stranger, Mighty Ray, Butter Noodles, Miles Power D, Frost the Hobbidon, Dan Andy the Light, Meta Mode, Wheels 282, Hedgehog, and Jamal S. And no thanks to Sir Bipton for that last question. <laughs> oh, come now. <laughs> he could have phrased it much, much worse. Oh, boy. <laughs> we will see you Saturday for the end of the month live Q&A session. Until then, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. See you tomorrow. Unless you're listening to this in the future, in which case, we'll see you next time. <sighs> Show is blurched. <laughs>
dinner time rolls around. It's oh, like, you know what? No. I'm hungry. I'm just going to go nuts. Oh, no. And so I partook in, and I've also been making concentrated effort to change my diet. My doctor said, your weight is out of control. Stop it. Get it in control. So I have been. I've been doing very well, Kyle. I've mm. lost 15 pounds. Nice. And part of that was I cut out most red meat. What? No! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't actually eat red meat all that often myself, but... I save it for a once in a while as a treat. Mm -hmm. I treated myself too much to burgers last night. Mmm, burger. God, did you too many burgers? Did you get sick? Too... too... Too many burgers. So, I don't think there's a, such a thing, but apparently there is. Part of it was too much heavy, bad food all at once. Part of it was doing it at night, and part of it was doing it on an empty stomach. Yeah, I suppose. So, and I hadn't slept much. Mm. So, I've pretty much been asleep today. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm feeling better. Lee's resting right now, so I'm going to try to keep it kind of low. Okay. Is she doing okay? Did you, you didn't? Yeah, she's all right. You didn't um, uh, make her sick too, did you? No, 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 no. She she's did... smarter than I am. Oh, okay. 